Ernest Shackleton had made one expedition to Antarctica. He was knighted afterwards, becoming a public hero. But on his second expedition, a disaster struck. He was faced with the challenge of saving his men from an icy death. Among them was a young man from Newport, someone who shouldn't have been there at all. He was Purse Blackborough, and his is an adventure story very much of its time, one that's hard to imagine could happen today. There's a notable photo of Purse taken during this expedition. He is pictured with a cat who belonged to the ship's carpenter. The cat was therefore called Mrs Chippy. More about that later. In 1911, the race to be the first to reach the South Pole was over. The expedition of Captain Robert Falcon Scott, which had sailed from Cardiff in June 1910, famously met with disaster. The Norwegian Roald Amundsen was the first to succeed. So explorers sought new challenges. Shackleton decided that he wanted to be the first to cross Antarctica on foot. He devised a project grandly called the Imperial Transantarctic Expedition. Money was raised, a ship, the Endurance, was bought, and a crew was recruited. In August 1914, the Endurance set sail for South America. On board were 29 men, 70 dogs, and that cat. Shackleton was a down-to-earth man who was liked and admired by his men, who called him the Boss. Purse Blackborough had been a merchant seaman since the age of 14. At 18, he found himself in South America without a ship. He befriended a young American named William Bakewell, who was in a similar situation. When they heard that Shackleton's expedition had arrived in Buenos Aires en route to Antarctica, they decided to join up. Bakewell claimed to be Canadian and was taken on as an able seaman, but Purse was rejected as being too young and inexperienced. But the friends hatched a plan. Purse was smuggled aboard and hidden in a locker, and there he stayed for several days until the endurance was at sea. Upon his inevitable discovery, Shackleton was furiously angry. He was said to have told Purse that when hunger struck an expedition, the stowaway was always the first to be eaten. Purse flippantly replied, They'd get a lot more meat off you, sir. Apparently, Sir Ernest saw the funny side, and he made Purse a steward. The teenager got stuck into the job and became a popular and useful member of the crew. The planned journey across Antarctica was to be 1,800 miles. The Endurance sailed towards Antarctica from the island of South Georgia in December 1914. But she hit unexpectedly bad weather and in January 1915 became icebound in the Weddell Sea. The sea is a million square miles of icebergs and ferocious storms. Shackleton called it the worst sea in the world. The ship could not be freed from the ice for months and so the crew waited and waited for milder temperatures. They found ways to keep busy and amused. But the great pressure of the ice twisted and cracked the ship's hull. On the 21st of November 1915, the Endurance sank. For the next two months, the men, dogs and cat existed on ice floes. In total, they had been stuck for nine months. Communication with the outside world was impossible. No one knew of their plight. There could be no rescue. They hoped they would drift towards land. When an opportunity arose, the men set off in three lifeboats, arriving in Elephant Island, nearly 350 miles away, after five exhausting days at sea. 
Purse, although suffering from frostbite, was allowed by Shackleton to be the first to step ashore on dry land. He was quite possibly the first human to set foot there. The situation was desperate on the desolate and windswept island. It was decided that the best hope of survival would be if the strongest of the lifeboats could make it to South Georgia, 720 nautical miles distant, and get help. It was an incredible challenge, almost suicidal, sailing a 23-foot boat through vicious seas to a tiny island so far away. But thanks to a fantastic feat of navigation by Endurance Captain Frank Worsley, the lifeboat and its crew of six reached the island, where there was a whaling station. Shackleton set about organising the rescue of the men on Elephant Island, including, of course, Purse Blackborough. Those still on the island were headed by Shackleton's second-in-command, Frank Wilde. The men sheltered under the two upturned lifeboats, they had been surviving for months on seal meat, penguins, and had much earlier eaten their own dogs. Now food was very short. Lunch was a single biscuit and some sugar cubes. Purse, a latecomer to the crew, had apparently been wearing leather boots, not warm felt ones as worn by the others. As a stowaway, perhaps there were no spare boots for him. His frostbite had turned to gangrene, and so the ship's surgeon amputated all the toes on his left foot. When the chloroform wore off, Purse was apparently in good spirits. It was three months later that the rescue party arrived at Elephant Island, and all the men were saved, two gruelling years after leaving home. Purse recovered from his frostbite in Chile and eventually went home to Newport. He received the Bronze Polar Medal for his service. He worked in the local docks, married and had six children. Purse died in 1949 at the age of only 53. And as for Mrs Chippy, the cat pictured with Purse, the animals could not be rescued, so Shackleton had ordered her to be shot along with the dogs. Her owner, carpenter Harry McNeish, was heartbroken, and it's said that he never forgave Shackleton. McNeish died in 1930, and on his grave in New Zealand can be seen a bronze image of his beloved cat, Mrs Chippy. As a postscript to this adventure, in 2022, after a long search by the Falklands Heritage Maritime Trust, the doomed ship Endurance was found. It had drifted in the ice and lies well preserved on the seabed, 3,000 metres down. That's more than 1.8 miles. Purse Blackborough should not have been aboard the Endurance, but as it turned out, he played his part well in a famous adventure of hardship, determination and survival. He is remembered still in his native Newport. His descendants have created a memorial in a park close to where he once lived. The story of Shackleton's stowaway lives on.